we're going to attempt now, in half an hour, to cook all four courses of the Great British Menu. The first thing we're going to do, and one of the dishes that actually went down really well with the judges, is the sticky pigeon. The skin's been taken off. Anybody who watched the programme will know I never cook a pigeon on the skin again. Spin the slice and then just fry it. I was down in Nesborough this morning at six o'clock having a, a bit of a forage round and I found this stuff. It's fantastic. Wild garlic. It grows all, all the way down the riverbank in Nesborough. Big leaves. There's nice delicate little uh, flowers that are white. Yorkshire salad leaves here, so they're going in the bowl. The great thing about this is it's all porridge, it's all local, it's all Yorkshire. Every single thing. What I tried to do as much as I possibly could is use Yorkshire food. Because I'm a Yorkshire farmer's daughter and I'm proud of it, so I want to use as much local stuff as I can. These are the beetroot crisps. Basically, delicate little pieces, very, very, very thin. So that's dish number one. Okay. Time's going on. <laughs> this is basically a pack of salt and sugar. So the sugar on there, the salt on there, and it's cured. I'm making a little smoker, so if you can make these at home, it's easy. I just need to get a bit of the fire going with this. That's what we want. <laughs> <laughs> when the smoke is fire, there we go, that's what I'm after. Then, pop my fish onto there. Keep it clean. So my little smoking pot here, it's going to go in the oven. And while that's in the oven, I'm going to show you the next dish. The guys at the black sheep just kindly giving us a bit of beer. So that's going in. Beer of self raising flour, mixed in. And what I'm making is scraps. In goes the scraps. While they're frying off, they're, uh, can everybody see that? Yeah, we've got, we got melts and, and, and crosses. <laughs> so, a splash of green in there. Just put some of the tea in there. Just to infuse the tea into the cream. So normally that would be a red hot mix of the pureed peas going into each glass side. So, the creams come up to the boil and in goes the agar agar. Just a slight dusting of it just to thicken it ever so slightly. Sit it on, like so. And to finish off this dish, we need our gold leaf. And then under the fish, pea shoots around. The next thing is where it gets, starts to get technical. You'll see it kicks out quite a bit of smoke. So that folks is the uh, dish number two. to make the lamb crust, the hay crust. So simple, anybody can do it, really they can. Yeah. So it's, it's the shoulder of the lamb, it's a piece of meat that works a lot, it's got a lot to do. Cooked it in some red wine and vegetables, with a tin foil over the top, cooked it for about an hour and a half, two hours. It's quite a long time, 175 degrees, but we want to tenderise that lamb, we want to get it tender. I just use the white of the egg. I'll just do a little bit just to show you. Use the white. And then mix that with a bit of my father's finest hay. <laughs> that goes in. This is very herby hay. There's no, um, there's no pesticides.
pesticides, it's very natural. But into this now, just take some flour. And basically, you've got the salt in there, you've got the hay in there for the flavour. So you don't really need to do a great deal more. Like so, get it forming a bowl. And then all you do, folks, is you roll that out and you wrap your lamb in the hay crust. What you end up with is something that looks like this. A little thing to do. And then you lift the lid, and hey presto, the lamp is all in there, ready to go. Look at that, sensational. That is probably one of the last sticks of forced Yorkshire rhubarb. It's almost out of season. All droids I know have sold out because I tried to get some from them. All you need to do is chop the rhubarb into sections, batons almost. And we're building up the layers of this meringue dessert. These are the rhubarb jellies. One last one. Okay. So that's rhubarb jellies, folks. All it is is eight leaves of gelatin to a pint. Caramelising the sugar, that's nice and brown now. In goes the rhubarb. So we're using this apple pot liqueur. In goes the flambe. Back steps the cameraman. <laughs> Um, we're going to put a few bits of butter in there as well. We're making a very rich, creamy, buttery, alcoholic kind of butterscotchy sauce to go with the rhubarb. Right. So, then we need to build up the meringue layers. Now what I've done with this folks is I've set some rhubarb in a ginger beer jelly. Sit that on top of the meringue, like so, just to keep it all together. Then to finish off the dessert, here's what you do. So your rhubarb syrup that goes in. And then because this particular one we're doing is for a street party, so we're going to get the Union Jack in there. The little rhubarb sticks, flambéed, and I hope you'll let, you know maybe have a try of these. Maybe are sensational. So you're building up a picture. That's the whole idea. Rhubarb curd that goes down with a bit of a Sheffield swipe, put a bit of hot crunch on there. And that is the Yorkshire mess, folks. <laughs>